Hello everyone and welcome to the Voice of the Prophet YouTube channel. My name is Prophet is Janelle and if you're a first time coming on with us, I want to welcome you. And if you're a returning subscriber, I want to thank you for coming back with us as well. And so I want to go ahead and get into this word. It's been a while since I have been on. There's been a lot going on in me in my personal life, but I just thank God um, that he has kept me and thank you all if you have been praying for me as well. And so I want to go ahead and get right back into this word and the Lord began to speak to me about um, his love and how sometimes his love may look a little bit reckless and in the end goal and everything that we see and happen in the world right now. And so the Lord gave me this word, reckless salvation, reckless salvation. And in the sense of it, the word reckless may not be um, used in a positive connotation, but in some ways, when we look at God and his character, and even in the Bible reading about the way he moves and the way he's done things, you know, even with the children of Israel, how he would send them into captivity and, you know, how he would bring judgment upon them, but then he would redeem them. He would bring them back unto himself. A lot of times the way God moves, it may seem a little bit reckless. And we know that there is a song by Corey Asbury that talks about the reckless love of God. But on today, the Lord began to bring me um, to this place of awareness of, of the end goal, the end game of what God really wants, even in the midst of everything that is happening right now. And so, you know, sometimes God's ways are not our ways. Well, all the time, his ways are not our ways. The Bible talks talks about his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And a lot of times God moves in ways um, that we don't understand and we don't really comprehend, right? Sometimes if we can be honest, the things that are happening right now and things you may have even experienced in your life, even over this past two years, and, and, and many of us have experienced things that have happened to us way before coronavirus even happened. And we may feel like, man, this was kind of hard. Lord, this was kind of harsh. You know, the things that God allows sometimes in the moment we don't understand because God's ways are mysterious. He works in mysterious ways. But the Lord began to speak to me. He says, listen, um, I want to tell them that even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of the things that we we see happening, and there are going to be a lot of more things that are going to happen. You know, this is just the beginning of a thing. You know, we see wars that are happening, rumor, rumors of war, different sicknesses that are coming, you know, things that God has spoken. None of it is new. You know, the Bible talks about it. He warned us about it. You know, um, the the prophets warned this what happened. Jesus warned. Paul talked about it. So none of it is new. But I want to remind the people, and the Lord began to, rem um, began to speak to me to tell me to remind them what what the end goal is, what God's end game is. And at the end of the day, through all of these shakings, through all of the things that we see happening, the purpose of this is to do two things, to wake up God's church, to wake up his bride, to call to call the church back to repentance. Many of the church, you know, have been in a place of stagnation, in a place of sleeping, even in a backslidden state, you know, in a place of lukewarmness. And God is calling his church back to repentance. So even though we've seen these shakings you know you got to understand that God comes for his church first you know he's not coming to judge the world before he comes to his church so even in the midst of all these shaking God is calling us back to repentance he's calling us back to communion he's calling us back to our first love he's calling the backsliders back in this is a pur purpose of it and, and the second thing that God desires, the reason, the, the very reason that he gave his son, the very reason that he allowed his son to come into this earth to die. And even in that sense, it may have seemed very reckless, like who would give up their only child um, for a people that don't even know him? Who would give up their own child to die in a way? Watch this, that Jesus did. He didn't die in a pleasant way. He didn't just die in his sleep. He didn't die of natural causes. No, he died a bloody death. And to many, that would seem, you know, very very extreme, but God is a God, you know, that is, it will, will take what may seem to man extreme measures to get his people's attention. And at the end of it all, the Lord begins to speak to me and he says that, that my end game, my end game, you know, we're, we're living in this world. And God can bless us and, and cause things to happen for us and, you know, cause the economy to shift and cause blessings and transfers of wealth and all these different things and make things attainable, you know, for the people who couldn't get it. And, and God is doing all those blessings and he's moving in different ways. He's freeing, he's shaking systems, he's freeing some people out of captivity, he's overturning some systems. But we got to remember what God's end goal is, what his end game is. And that end game has never changed. It's always been 
for the salvation of this world from the time Adam sinned. That has always been God's end goal to redeem his people back to himself. And so we may, it may seem a little harsh, but watch this. God knows what it takes to bring his people back to him. You know, the Lord began to speak to me. He says, yes, you know, um, there's a book, there's a scripture, I believe in the book of Isaiah. He says, you know, he knows how much that wheat can take. He knows what tools he can use on, on the corn, on the wheat, on the different materials. He knows how much they could take. And even as we look on the outward and we say, man, this is a very difficult place we're walking through. Man, this is a lot of mourning. This is a lot of death. This is a lot of destruction. This is a lot of chaos. Things are happening. It seems like every day things happening in the climate, things happening in the world and the weather, you know, in the economy, everywhere we look, there is something that is happening. But the Lord began to speak to me. He began to show me. He says, no, daughter. It's not by coincidence. This is not man that is doing this. This is my hands working in this. And even in that, I know what it will take. You know, some people may say, you know, oh man, it really won't take all that. But God knows the depths of man's heart. He knows what it takes for that man to come to repentance. He knows what it takes for that woman's eyes to be open and to come to the awareness to the awareness of who he is, of who he is. And that is God's desire for us to come into the awareness of who he is. And not only come into that awareness but to accept him to believe in him and to yield to him to come into communion with him god wants to have communion with his people he wants to have that relationship but most importantly he wants the salvation of men and he began to speak he says what is it that we gain this whole world and we lose our soul. So yes, God can bless us. God can advance us. God can promote us. God can do all things in the midst of all of this. He says, but what is it all of that if at the end of it all, we you lose your soul? You know what I'm saying? So the Lord knows. He says, yes, you're going to see these things are going to happen. Destruction upon destruction, calamity upon calamity, famines, chaos, all kind of things are going to happen. He says, but don't lose heart. Don't be discouraged. Know that I know what it takes to, for, for man to get on their knees and to to cry out unto me. He says, I know what it takes for the salvation of men. I know what it takes to call those backsliders back to me. So beloved, I just want to encourage you that to know that God is working in the midst of this situation. Though the times may get darker, remember that God light shine brighter in times of darkness. God knows what he's doing. He is the creator, almighty, sovereign, omniscient, omnipotent God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He was here before we were here. He knows better. He knows best. And so I want to read you this scripture. I want to read you this scripture. This comes from Isaiah 55. And it's, we're going to start at verse 7. It says this. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. This is what God wants. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. God is a merciful God. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So I just want to encourage you on today, even as we walk further into um, these dark times and even in the midst of the pandemic, I want to encourage you to know don't lose sight of what God in game is. Don't lose sight, you know, of spreading the good news. Don't lose sight of praying for those unsaved loved ones. Don't lose sight of even praying for the different nations and regions who have not come into the awareness of God. Because at the end of the day, that is what matters the most. Yes, we can help them. Yes, we can support. Yes, we can send aid. Yes, we can feed and clothe them. But if their soul has not been rested in God, if their soul has not been redeemed by um, the Savior of this world, then what is it for all of that and they lose their soul that is God's end game so beloved be encouraged continue to pray continue to have hope God's going to bring us through it I believe it he's kept us this far he's going to continue to keep us and I'm praying for you guys anyone who have lost a loved one in the midst of my of this pandemic my condolences go out to you those of you who are mourning you know those of you if you have been in a place of affliction or you know you have lost jobs I am definitely praying for his body for his brides and those who are in pain suffering and in hurt but remember God sees you and remember Remember, at the end of the day, even though I'm praying for you, God, Jesus is praying for you. So people of God, like and share this video and have a blessed day.